I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have back with us Leonard Dorlochter, the co-founder of Peak. Leonard, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for taking the time to come back after this busy summer working on all things Web3, IoT, economy of things. I'm excited to dive into all of this. Yeah, Ashton, thanks a lot for having us again. It's a great pleasure to be back. You're very welcome. Let's catch the viewers up for those who didn't see our first interview uh, with what are the solutions that, that Peak is working on? You know, how are you trying to make the world uh, a better place through this technology? And then we'll dive into all the latest updates. Sounds great. Yeah, so generally what we're working on, the overall vision is to create a machine economy or how we like to call it as well, an economy of things that is Web3 based. So without central players, without intermediaries, um, meaning that to just talk about a few use cases, for example, a charging station and an electric vehicle can exchange uh, energy with each other without having to go through central platforms or something like a decentralized Uber uh, will be possible um, where, you know, taxi rides can be booked peer-to-peer uh, -peer instead of going through big central platforms. And yeah, by doing that, we want to make uh, the, this machine economy more fair. We also want to democratize the access to invest in it and to participate in it and like enable everyone, for example, who has a car to be able to participate in car sharing um, and not only a few big companies that have big fleets of cars to participate in that market. And um, ultimately, we also see this age of automation approaching who's going to own everything and how's that value going to be distributed in society. And we see great potential in the technology to create new mechanisms to distribute that value, which ultimately this machine economy will create without many humans involved, like thinking decades ahead, of course. Um, but yeah, we see that Web3 and blockchain technology is really has the potential to to be the foundation to create that in a in, in a fair uh, fair way for everyone and a better way than it is today. Mm, incredible intro, Leonard. And yeah, I feel like we're very early on uh, economy of things, robots and automation really taking over the world as they say it will. And we're really just at the beginning stages. So I see this as a huge project uh, that hopefully brings yeah. brings benefits for all. Um, and so maybe you can talk a little bit about how long your team has been working on this and, and where exactly are you at right now in the stages of getting to uh, robot world domination? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, no, for sure. This is a very uh, long term vision. And we've yeah. been like thinking and wrapping our heads around this um, since 2017, but then properly starting to work on peak since 2020. We've worked a lot with enterprises. We've been um, consulting them and seeing, okay, which use cases make sense because of course, machines are manufactured by companies and not by individuals. So you need to involve those companies as well. And um, yeah, we've then kind of started in that enterprise field and like end of last year really focused our efforts on, okay, how can we decentralize everything? How can we make it open source? How can we um, make sure the the governance and and the decentralization is sound because if it's if a few big companies are involved then it's again um, they have their interests and it's not really web three so we've been since then working and building in the Polkadot ecosystem to um, create our layer one uh, network which as of now has uh, core functionalities available for developers such as identities for machines, mm -hmm. access control for machines, payment for machines and humans to interact so that those decentralized applications such as a decentralized charging network for electric vehicles can be built on top. And um, yeah, we are like having this, the test net network is out there, people can test it and build on it. And we're now preparing, actually, like we're testing already on the Rococo network for parachains. So we're, we're testing the, the parachain part, uh, have upgraded the consensus and soon going to run for Kusama parachain and then also for Polkadot parachain uh, afterwards. Um, but this is going to be, yeah, like it's a, a quick, short pre-announcement that's going to be announced shortly, our Kusama network. So. Mm. Wow. Very cool. Looking forward to that. Leonard, and uh, 
with the polka dot network i feel like um well, let me let me phrase it this way when you look at a decentralized network uh like like ethereum or polka dot and just having basic users transfer uh assets or uh, you know make transactions with each other in a decentralized way how much harder is it to do that with uh, economy of things and, and automation and you know, what do you have to change from a traditional blockchain network to make that work with robot automation? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is, um, I mean, the, the main challenge is that you're not only on the blockchain network, right? Not all assets are natively on the network, but you need to connect to real world assets. And this is kind of the, the big challenge. Then in, in the end, like having the wallets and having the assets and exchanging that on the network is quite straightforward and um, works like in, in, in other networks, but really having those machines connected and onboarding them and um, yeah, making that work. This, this is kind of the, the main difference and main challenge that uh, we, we, we are up to tackle because it is a tremendous potential. It's a huge market. It will happen no matter what. Um, but yeah, like the, 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 it, it's, it's not something that has happened massively yet, right? The big blockchain plus IoT hype. I mean, there has been hype. Everyone knows it's a great match, but no one really has conquered it yet. So mm -hmm. we're working hard on, on doing this. <laughs> great to hear. And with the in development of applications for, for this automation and sort of some kind of there must be some kind of standard protocol that the economy of things uh, like objects will hook into to sort of speak to each other. How does that work on Peak? Are yeah. there developers developing applications specific to uh, a standard or to each device? How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually, there's that's where kind of the identity comes in. So the the base it's really the machine identity or also, also how we like to call it the machine passport kind of so if a machine has an identity you know it's identifiable on the network it can technically um you know one identity can transact with another identity it's really how it exists on the network and then of course the way it's connected through what the connection is and how the private keys handled and so on are individual but it, it's really all these machine identities then existing on that decentralized network and then being able to transact with each other based on the business logic of the specific application. Um, but yeah, I would, I would call this the identity or the machine passport, how we like to call it as well, as this unifying protocol that is onboarding uh, machines and enables them to identify each other and then also transact with each other. Mm. Okay, great. And with this kind of technology with economy of things and you know as eventually smart devices most devices becoming smart devices where they're connecting to the web speaking to each other in, in a way uh, i feel like this is one of those industries that has a lot of promise and, and often you hear people talking about how it is the future you know, similar to vr and, and, and blockchain but the actual applications and use cases are are, are sort of far limited I'm curious if you're following along with the economy of things industry, you know, outside of blockchain as well, and just smart automation and, and how quickly that's growing and where do you see it at compared to where it's going to be in like 10 years? Yeah, that is actually um, really interesting because there is a massive IoT community already, right? It's been around since the... Uh, yeah, many years, much, much longer than Web3, right? Since, since decades, actually. And um, there has been a lot of work done on smart devices, on IoT. There's still a lot more to do and a lot lot more to, to explore. But we are kind of tapping into this massive IoT community as well and um, can really um, leverage a lot of work that has been done there already. And of course, um, we don't... We're not only having the, the Web3 developer community, but also the IoT developer community and mm. kind of bringing those together. Um, and right now, the IoT market is already tremendous and it's, it's, it's set for, for growing much, much, much more in the, in the next 10 years. I mean, the number of connected devices and generated data, I, I don't have the exact numbers right now, but it's, it's, it's buff, buffling. Um, um, 
how much growth there is going to happen and like combining that and enabling then new business cases and use cases on the web3 network i think uh yeah of course it doesn't happen from today to tomorrow but over the next five ten years there will be a tremendous growth in that intersection of web3 and iot mm -hmm. mm, great insights and currently in blockchain you know one the main trends we're seeing with decentralized applications are primarily in the DeFi space and in nfts i'm curious on your take uh, on the current status in DeFi and sort of how those Web3 networks are set up. Uh, I feel like it wasn't set up as optimally as it could have been. You know, seeing what we've seen throughout 2022, uh, where there was just a cascading tumbling down of a, a lot of DeFi protocols, um, whether they were because of some centralized party failure or because of some decentralized smart contract hack. Um, I feel like there's still a lot of issues, and if those don't get fixed, part of that might also transfer into, you know, if some of this technology goes into the economy of things. Um, so ha ha what's your insight onto uh, where DeFi is at right now, and will mm. any of those issues be moving into the economy things in Web3? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This year has been uh, tough so far, right? Uh, uh... DeFi starting off as very, very promising, lots of hype and value being generated through that hype. Um, and then what just happened, right? Uh, and I think overall, I mean, DeFi is here to stay. It's fantastic, but it, it really uh, has a lot of issues and a lot of flaws. And those got like shown and got exploited. And mm -hmm. I do think we're going to build a better DeFi ecosystem going forward, not, not us specifically, but the entire Web3 community learning out of those mistakes understanding okay um we don't have any middlemen so we need to build those things so much more robust and really learn from from what has happened so i do i do think right now the state is not good everyone is very skeptical and critical but it's definitely here to stay and i think many of the protocols and many entrepreneurs will build back better and stronger mm. based on on the learnings and um we also have quite some DeFi ports in our product vision and what, what we want to leverage and implement, but we will have to be super careful how we do it and, and what we use because we're working with those enterprises, right? And the real world. And if there has been a, a hack or there's mistrust, then they will not trust the system. So we really have to make sure that what we are using and doing is, is bulletproof. Uh, and of course that, that makes us, um a bit more you know like having to be a bit more careful in, in terms of how we leverage DeFi. but we will start very soon with 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 basic things proven things implement those and um make sure to that we have the things that we use being tested and you never have a full guarantee that it actually will not be exploited but yeah we're gonna we especially now we have to be more careful and we have to also bring trust and reputation towards the real world players. Mm -hmm, definitely. And they say, you know, you, you don't know how secure your smart contract is until it gets hacked as currently, at least with the Ethereum smart contracts, they're public and the code is sitting there, you know, waiting for attackers to find a hole in it. Um, so yeah. I, I could see when there's more real world assets on the line that makes it, you know, even more, uh, of a priority to make sure that there, there's no flaws as well. And, and, and I'm curious if, if you looked into this deeper on will there be, you know, what to what extent will the intersection of, of IoT devices and economy of things be with DeFi? You know, I've often heard stories about uh, uh, the car sharing programs and if it's decentralized or, you know, if the car itself is able to loan itself out to people for certain times and then it, it there's decentralized financial products built into that where it's it's loaning itself and it's earning assets and then it's able to use them in different financial product ways i feel like robots might be better at DeFi than than traders in the future sometime <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure i i mean what you just described is going to happen for sure that a robot taxi is having its own wallet as, as being uh, used by someone as being paid 
paying other people um, or paying a charging station, then maybe even investing its, its own funds, uh, generating yields. So I, these things will all happen. Um, but of course, there are quite some problems to solve along the way to get there. Um, how can that be done user friendly? How can it be done secure? How can it be done in a legal way? So um, yeah, working with, with entrepreneurs and that's why for us really, we see ourselves as setting the breeding ground, the infrastructure, and creating the right incentives so that people can actually come build those applications, solve those problems and, and have the incentive to do so. Um, so we, we, we're really thinking from that perspective to make sure that people yeah, see enough opportunity in, in, in going after that and solving it. And then I think also there will be quite some hybrid approaches along the way. So there will be a bit of Web2 involved, for example, when you, as a big company, you manage lots of machines, many companies will will require to have a traditional login so that they can forget a password and not only have all the machines assigned to to a wallet you know where someone loses the key so we will have to build in some like building blocks on the way making it as decentralized as possible while still making it feasible to then finally arrive at full decentralization but we really see this as a as a process um and of course, we always aim to go as decentralized as we can, especially with the network and everything, and then trying to make it usable on top for, for companies. Incredible. And I know part of that journey is, is going to require capital. And I saw that Peak recently closed a, a $6 million round. Uh, congratulations on that, first of all. Uh, maybe you could talk about Thank you. that round. Uh, the, the partners and, and what with that closed, what are the next major steps moving forward? Yes, yeah, thanks a lot for the, the congrats. Um, yeah, we're really happy about the round. We got many great investors on board, like Fundamental Labs leading the round. Um, further known ones are Hashkey, for example, and also GSR as the biggest market maker in crypto being on board, which is, of course, very helpful. And um, yeah, so we're, we're really happy with the investors that, that, that came on board. And um, we're using the funds really now to build the team further, to, to like deliver on, on all our promises. To um, And we're also very happy that we just closed it kind of at the beginning of the bear market so we can really build now and be ready for the next bull run. Um, this is great. Um, yeah, community growth and, and building is, is going to happen with this money as well. And yeah, that we, we, we will definitely raise more. So that hasn't been everything. So there's mm -hmm. quite some more, quite a, a lot of fundraising plans going on, but we are, yeah, we're ready to build for quite some time with, with that round. And, and this is, this is great. Um, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. And you mentioned about the, the, the Polkadot and Kusama chains and, and, and the test net, um, in the next six months or if it's a year as well, because this is a very long-term, uh, you know, goals that you need to achieve. What is uh, sort of the main things that you're trying to get delivered out to the public next? Yeah, so it it, it definitely aligns around the production networks. Um, I mean, we have that test net now. We will have an incentivized test net. We will uh, then have the the Kusama parachain um, as the first production network going live. And um, so we have core functionalities, but what we want to deliver, we have multiple interfaces for people to do everything they can do with a token, investor, participate in governance and so on as, as one, for example, and a console where people can add and manage their machines and so on. So those are like user interface products that we, we have to deliver. And um, the goal is really to have the, the complete kind of working product ecosystem up and running at the time we're going for uh, Polkadot Parachain and, and becoming a, a, a production network on Polkadot. So this is really what we focus on in terms of uh, executing on the product and engineering side. And uh, of course, it's never done. It, it will, uh, will like continue and continue, but um, we have we're, we're getting closer to delivering the first overall version of the product peak product ecosystem. Incredible, Leonard. And it sounds like your team has done a great job so far. So please continue on that track. I will be looking forward to those updates 
on, on the blockchain ecosystems as well. For the viewers that want to follow along with everything Peak is working on and, and check out the existing communities, what's the best way for them to learn more information about Peak? So there's uh, our Discord um, server and Twitter is probably the best place to, to get regular updates and to engage with us and be in touch is, is via Discord. Um, yeah, those two. Sounds great, Leonard. I will leave the links in the description box below as well to make it easy for the viewers. Thank you so much for the insights into uh, IoT devices, economy of things, making Web3 integrated in there to make it a better place and more decentralized, transparent and fair. All the best with everything moving forward on Peak Network and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you so much for having us, Ashton. <laughs>